you know, it's kind of like being that liaison between the two and um, trying to do your best to make everyone's jobs easier while also getting that data or getting that information that, you know, the sales leaders need at the same time. So it's a, it's a great, it's a delicate balance. Got it. Um, next question, current sales of tech stack. Yes. So uh, Salesforce is our, is our CRM, uh, our marketing team uh, uses Pardot, uh, sales, sales team and inside sales uh, leverage LinkedIn sales navigator, um, zoom info for, for contacts and, um, Power, uh, our analytics team uh, leverages Power BI, so we we attempt to do a lot of a lot of things in Salesforce when we can, uh, especially since that's the primary source of truth. But when we need to uh, get a little bit more advanced, uh, we have a, a great analytics person on the team that uh, is able to to build all that all that out in uh, in Power BI. Got it. And just for context for the listeners, uh, approximately how many sales reps are we looking at, and how many people in your sales ops team? Yeah. So. We probably have about 50 sellers across the company, but we have a, probably another 30 to 50 uh, account managers as well. Um, we have a, an internal demand gen team, probably about the size of about 10 uh, in all. Um, and sales operations is, we've got several people doing different things. Um, so we've got an analytics person within the sales enablement team, uh, our director of uh, sales tools and effectiveness has a couple of Salesforce admins. So there's probably mm -hmm. about uh, five or six of us in all that mm -hmm. we we all work really well together and we we all kind of have overlapping responsibilities at times. So it's it's nice kind of having, uh, you know, redundancy there. And it's, it's, it sounds like quite a general, well, it, it, it sounds like, because I, I ask a lot of people these questions and I'm trying to understand like the, the idea ratio of like, Sales ops resources for salespeople. It seems like you're about in the middle. If we take the account managers, if we count them as well, it's about five to 100, um, which is kind of about in the middle of the ranges that I see. Would, would, would you agree that that's like the right ratio? So that's one in, if I get my math right, <laughs> there's one in one to 20. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so I've actually worked for a couple of uh, smaller businesses as well. And that was basically the, the ratio, uh, about okay. 1 to 20 uh, with me, you know, prom being the primary uh, sales ops person um, and supporting, you know, not only just the BDs and reps, but kind of those uh, executive sales support and people who were also entering opportunities and, and contacting leads, et cetera. So I think you're right on. Got it. Okay, maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna tweet that out and see see how many reaches. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, so, so the, the, the tech stack seems like pretty standard. Um, nothing like unusual there. Mm -hmm. um, the way you the way you built that, did you decide on Salesforce and then you like kind of chose stuff after that, or like how, how did that evolve uh, and were you involved in that process? Yeah. So. All of these, all of these tools were in place uh, prior to my arrival. So I've been at T-Tech since the beginning of the year. Um, but my uh, my other experiences, um, it really has been, you know, deciding on what that what that CRM is, and then building out from there. Um, so as you as you can see, every, everything is starting to integrate with Salesforce, uh, which has been fantastic. So it's it's really trying to to leverage those tools that you know that you need and and trying to you know, make make one side of the house speak to the other. Yeah. Uh, now you mentioned being the data police earlier. Um, how are you currently <laughs> dealing with data policy? Um, and are you responsible for that, or are your CRM admins kind of responsible for driving that? Yeah, it's it's really an all hands on deck. Um, so each of us have uh, different things that we're looking at and, and evaluating. Uh, we've created several uh, several automated reports, several dashboards that the sales team can use themselves, um, as well as some individuals from other departments. So uh, again, our, our sales ops teams they're looking for certain criteria and, and data data integrity. Um, our finance teams are continuing to, once deals close they're they're evaluating to make sure you know all the numbers match up with sows and, and things like that so um we've we've got a lot of eyes looking at it which is fantastic and and you know those those select admins that can that can go in and make those changes got it um now moving on to the sales team how what is your best strategy for getting them to do something that you want them to do 
Yeah. Um, I think it's, I think it's unique. Um, so in my, over the last three years, I've actually been working as a, you know, in sales ops, sales support as uh, as a remote employee. Um, so I think I've, I've kind of had to go above and beyond to develop that trust, build those relationships and to really, really establish that, Hey, I'm here to help you. Um, so I want, I want to know, you know, what are your pain points? What are um, some things that you would like to improve and, you know, kind of consolidate that from, from all individuals on the team and, and kind of go forward with a, you know, with a strategy. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's all about one building that trust and letting them know here, I'm, I'm here to serve you. Um, I'm here to help you in, in your role and make you perform better. Uh, primarily focused on selling and reducing the time spent on, uh, you know, the administrative task. So um, yeah, I, I think it's just, I think it's all about, um, I think it's all about that relationship and, you know, making sure that you get the buy-in before you roll out, you know, roll out a new tool or roll out a process and say, you know, here you go, have at it. So well, what you're saying is that before you try and get them to do anything, you need to essentially show them that you want them to win and you're there to help. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's, that's what I've tried to do. And, you know, in my already short time here at T-Tech is to go in and try to get those quick wins. It's like, what can I do here immediately to, to kind of get you to that next level um, while also encompassing the, you know, the sales leader strategies and, you know, the, the, uh, the goals of the company, uh, you know, while keeping that in mind too. So it's all, it's kind of all about, that that it's it's really that balance, right? It's the, of the tactical and the uh, strategic decisions that uh, that you have to that you have to monitor. But the, 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 there's something there that I think you you know, looks really valuable, and that's early on in the relationship. If you can do something, if you can do something for them that actually helps them and makes them more productive, that or like or however you help them, that sets the relationship off in like a really good frame right for you then to influence them to do stuff for you down the road is, is that what you meant exactly and um yeah and it's and, you know it's pulling that time kind of tying that into to the training and stuff and um rolling out these new tools that you want to you want to show them what's relevant to them um rather than just you know making a a, a standard training program, a one hour session for everyone, um, really kind of personalizing that and saying, Hey, this is, this is the benefit to you. This is, uh, this is why this is going to help you in your role, whether you are a BD, whether you are a inside salesperson, uh, whether you're on the marketing side, um, and really just trying to, you know, make that more of a personalized approach. Got it. Onboarding salespeople. How many salespeople have you guys onboarded this year? And do you have like a, a formal process for doing that yeah um numbers wise i'm not exactly sure but we do we do have a formalized program so whenever uh whenever the sales uh well whenever anyone joins t-tech we have a really a fantastic kind of company onboarding po uh, process that um you know what's required for week one month one month three, et cetera. So those kind of those regular check-ins. Uh, but for the sales team, I'm, I'm there either at the, uh, the beginning, probably that first, later in the first week, um, and then ongoing after that. So really uh, training them on the sales tools, uh, the sales force processes. Um, this is how we do certain things. This is where you go to for certain questions and really just kind of providing them with with everything that they need, right? Kind of a, a single, a, a single cheat sheet that says, if you have questions uh, about Salesforce, here's who you go to. If you have questions about uh, products or services, here, here's the, here's where you go to. So, um, just trying to, I, I, especially with information overload, I guess that's with every company as soon as you start out. Um, so, just trying to condense that and, and make things simple. Got it. Are you involved in the the, the sales forecasting process? Yes. Um, so running running those weekly uh, weekly forecast calls, monthly quarterlies, um, that's something that we're continuing to to evolve and uh, continuing to challenge ourselves. So, uh, you know, monitoring trends, monitoring uh, just the health of the overall pipeline. Um, 
so yeah, that's something I'm, that's uh, definitely top of mind and one of my primary responsibilities. Got it. Um, and then do you also have sales leadership in that meeting as well, or is that just you and the salespeople? Yeah. Um, so I'm, so the forecast calls that I've, participate in primarily are with the uh, the various sales leaders of the company. Uh, so okay. um, with all the different departments, there are times that I'll, um, I'll always try to come in and sit on sit in on those one on one calls, um, where possible, but most of the time, it's kind of the more of those those group and departmental calls and um, able to able to hear what's going on. And, uh, you know, from the forecast perspective with the sales team, and then uh, with our inside sales team as well. So kind of hearing what's going on on both sides of the funnel. Got it. So the sales leader will have the, or manager would have the individual forecasting calls with their reps. And then you also have a group call where all the sales leaders come on and that's the, the meeting that you attend and that you participate in. Exactly. That's correct. Okay. Um, shifting now to making reps more productive. Are you doing, do you have any kind of, uh, campaigns at the moment or have you done anything in the past that have boosted productivity of your reps? Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of tied into the, to the, you know, kind of the backbone of what I've, what I've tried to do. And that's, you know, the building, the building the trust and building the relationships in order to, um, you know, continue to tweak processes and, and put things more, uh, uh, put things more clearly for the sales team, whether it's, those guidance for success steps at, at each stage, um, exp you know, just trying to, uh, you know, continue to refine the process. It's, it, you know, it's continuous improvement. There's, there's never going to be a time where you, where you sit back as a sales ops person and say, this is, this is great. I'm, I'm done. Uh, there's always something to, to be worked on, to be, to be tweaked. Um, so yeah, with product productivity, I think the big thing that we're trying to work on is is just transparency with with activities, um, seeing you know the the kind of the cadences of uh, who's reaching out at different times, where those handoffs are taking place, um, just you know just making sure the left foot is in front of the right, and you know we've got a, kind of our marching orders. Got it. Um, and KPIs that you're currently tracking or like the, the core KPIs you're tracking in, in those forecasting meetings, um, what what are the, the KPIs you find most useful? Yeah, um, probably pretty pretty standard there. So the bookings, uh, bookings versus target uh, for the month, for the quarter, um, and then, you know, the next quarter as well. Um, we also have some additional um, I'd, I'd mentioned kind of our, our Power BI analysis and things like that. So kind of more the in-depth um, stage durations and, and what it takes to, to win a deal. So our, you know, how, how often does, a, uh, does an opportunity come in and hit every stage? Um, are, we are we seeing jumps? So continuing to kind of monitor, monitor that. Um, and then I think I've, I've heard this on a, on a couple of your, the previous uh, podcasts as well, and kind of the average sales cycle versus average deal size, um, you know, kind of wanting to accelerate the, the time it takes to close a deal, um, but also seeing what the effect is of the, of the revenue associated with that. Um, so that's definitely, yeah. a, again, a, a balance. I, I think that's, that's kind of my theme of, of everything. It's, there's definitely a balance there. That's super interesting, isn't it? And I can't remember who said that. I should remember, but how they're basically saying that if you try and speed time to close, that can impact total revenue of the deal, and therefore it may not be a good idea to totally optimize like velocity through the pipeline, right? Right. Yeah. Is it? I mean, yeah. You start having those questions. Um, you know, is it is it worth increasing your deal? You know, by twenty percent if it extends the sales cycle by 10 days, you know, what are the, what are kind of those trade-offs? So um, obviously those are the things that we try to report up and then people a lot smarter than me are, are making those decisions. And that's like a classic sales operations problem, right? Like no one else in the business would A, have the ability or B, like would be involved in that decision. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, being being there on the front lines and, and kind of seeing the, uh, you know, seeing the details um, and then rolling that up. So, yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely great when you as a sales operations person can present something that, you know, wasn't just visible or transparent at, at an eye glance view that you can, you know, do some, 
you know, data analysis and, and, and do some, do some unique reporting to, to kind of help tell a story and, and maybe kind of impact decisions. You are. Um, okay. Final question. Who has taught you the most about sales operations? Yeah. So I think what's, what's been interesting is I've never necessarily rolled up to a, you know, a sales operations manager or a director of sales operations, but I have always been, um, I've, I've always ultimately reported to either a, you know, a higher level sales business development person or an operations person. And I think I've tried to do my best to, uh, to kind of pull together everything that they've taught me of, you know, what it takes to run a successful operations. What are those key metrics that leadership likes to see? Um, so I, th I think that's, you know, trying to do my best to incorporate all of those. I've been fortunate enough to have some, some great leaders and great mentors um, already here in my early career. And I think that's, that's kind of what's driven me to that. But I also want to, the second part of that question um, or second part of that response, I want to applaud you and EBSTA for what you are doing with this podcast. This has been a tremendous resource for me personally. Um, I can only imagine how much, uh, you know, being someone who's experienced that has five years experience, there's so much that I'm continuing to learn. So I would have, uh, I would have definitely loved to have been listening in, uh, at, you know, <laughs> day one of sales operations, this would have been tremendous. So, um, again, thank you for, thank you for putting this on. This has been terrific for me personally. Uh, Doug, my pleasure. You're actually the first person that said that. So that's amazing. Thank you. Um, let me pick out the things that I particularly liked, uh, when they succeed, I succeed, which is like a great mindset for any person in sales operations. Um, being the data police, I thought it was quite funny. I have <laughs> um, this is super interesting. You've proving early on that you can add value to a salesperson's life early on in that relationship. So later down the road, when you're trying to influence them to adopt a tool, change the process, then they're going to trust and believe that you truly want their best interests. And then finally, yeah, this is, this is also true. Uh, never will there be a time when you're done, right? No one's going to sit back. No sales ops person is going to sit back and be like, you've got it. That's right. So this thing I, I picked out, Derek, thanks so much for your time. Super insightful. Um, I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, for, for people listening to the recording, we were actually a little bit late, which was after all night, Derek. So if anyone was trying to watch live, but then it dropped out because we were too late, I apologize to you and um, that won't happen again. Um, but Derek, Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it.